For our next circuit, we'll add a data logging shield to our water sensor circuit and update our code to record data to an SD card inserted in the data logger to include a date timestamp. So here are two examples of uh, data logging shields. This one's uh, put together by Adafruit. They put together some wonderful tutorials. Uh, they've got great customer service, although their products are a little bit more expensive. And uh, this is a clone that I purchased on eBay. Fraction of the cost of what I'd pay for something on Adafruit. But the downside uh, to purchasing a, a piece of hardware on eBay like this is typically it's poorly documented and uh, customer support is pretty much non-existent for something like this. Also, make sure that your data logger comes with a CR1220 3-volt lithium cell, which is required for the real-time clock to operate. If not, you'll have to purchase one separately. Also, you will need to purchase an SD camera card for your data logger. If you purchase your card from Adafruit, it will be pre-formatted and guaranteed to work with other hardware sold by that company. These are really simple to use. You just basically take your SD card, insert it in the slot, and then you would just mount it right on top of your Arduino. You can take the card out once you're done with your data logging activities, and then you can purchase or use one of these uh, little SD card readers. You can insert the card in the reader. You can find the right slot. And then you use the USB port um, with your computer and you can read the card contents. So here's the new circuit we'll be working with. It's essentially the same, exactly the same as our last circuit, except now we're gonna be feeding all those wires through the female headers on the data logger which is mounted on our Arduino. And all you need to do is remove all your wires, mount the shield, and then wire it up exactly as you had it before. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Before we get into the code, you will need to install the RTC or real-time clock library in the library folder of your Arduino IDE directory. The library will allow collected data on the SD card to be timestamped with a real date and time rather than an arbitrary time signature based on elapsed seconds. Details on installing the RTC library and setting the clock on your data logger are included in the link associated with Adafruit's learning section on data logging shields, which has been copied to the description of this video. Adafruit includes a link to the library itself and even a tutorial on installing libraries should you need it all of which are included in its Data Logger Shield tutorial. Please note that the demonstration code I'm sharing does require this library to be installed, or the code will not compile. So as we did with our first sketch, let's quickly go through the code. Please note that you don't need to have a deep understanding of this code to use it. A general understanding should allow you to modify this for your own needs, so don't worry too much if the next few slides don't make perfect sense. Here are the libraries that we'll be using with this Data Logger. The first three come standard with our Arduino IDE, but the fourth is the one we had to install manually to support real-time date time stamping. When you first upload and run this sketch, this code checks the integrity and formatting of your SD card. If you see an error message in your serial terminal indicating that the card failed or is not present, it's because your code is hanging here. This is for good reason, since you don't want to assume your data logger is writing data to an SD card that is corrupt or is not formatted correctly, only to find out after your planned monitoring event is complete. Should you run into problems using the SD card, helpful hints and recommendations are included in this link associated with Adafruit's learning section on data logging shields. Within our loop, the logic of this new code is very simple. Essentially, we are storing our time stamp in a variable called now that is of data type date time which is a member of that new RTC library we installed. We then create a variable data string of type string to store the date time stamp and sensor data. Then we read our analog pin into our sensor variable and then amend our data string with both the date time stamp as well as our sensor data. Next, we use the same logic as before to determine the flow state based on the response on our analog pin, and we amend that information to our data string variable. Then we write the data string to our SD card, echo that same string to our serial terminal, 
and wait two seconds to repeat the process. Again, here's a demonstration of our circuit in action. Here's our code, which we're going to compile. It's done compiling, so let's go ahead and upload it. It's currently uploading. This will take a few seconds. And it's done uploading. So now it's part of my hardware. So let's open up a serial terminal. And sure enough, uh, there's the information regarding my flow state with a timestamp. So now I can take a, a little jar of water, add my water sensor. There's my LED lighting up. And uh, sure enough, my serial terminal is reporting that flow is on. This is what's being written to my um, SD card currently. Note the time's 9.51. Let's remove the sensor from the jar. The LED's off. And now, a few seconds later, the flow is being registered as off. Let's remove the data logging card, insert it in a card reader, which is hooked up to my computer. Open the associated datalog.txt file. Here's some old data from prior experiments. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And sure enough, at about 9.51, there's the data that was recorded suggesting that flow had turned on and then later had turned off. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to set up an LCD display with a Feather Fona cell phone on a breadboard, and then show you how to post data to an Internet of Things website known as ThingSpeak. Subscribe for updates, and thanks for watching.